most of the brands that are, are out there have, you know, cut people's salaries 50%, renegotiating contracts, like going back a few years when you made the decision to, to leave Quicksilver and start Former, are you happy with the decision you made back then or is it something that you're like, you're like, oh, maybe um, I could have held on to some money for a little bit longer? Or- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I have no perspective on on that decision. I can't really dwell on where – I can't go back in time and, like, dwell on any choices I ever made, whether it's, like, leaving tour or leaving sponsorship or anything and have any, like, regret or – feel I should have done something else. I just know where I'm at right now and, and what's ahead of me. And um, I'm feeling pretty good about former now, but financially I would have been in a lot better place, obviously, but <laughs> that doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't know. I definitely should have milked, milked my surf career a lot harder in a logical, you know, realistic way that it wasn't a very smart decision, but I'm here right now and that's what I did. And I'm just kind of, I don't know. Like I said, it's hard for me to regret. But if you think logically, it was a very poor decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so were you happy? <laughs> uh, I'm always yeah. happy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> How's former going these days? Like I remember when we were in Africa last year, uh, I asked you that question and you sort of like, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> you, you didn't know exactly where you're standing with all that. Is it, you feel like it's, it's starting to get a lot stronger and start to, you know, find its identity and find its place in the market? Uh, it feels like it is now, right now. Um, we've definitely had a really, really tough, uh, learning curve, you know, starting, I don't think any of us really understood that we were starting a business. If that makes any sense. We were just like, fuck surf companies. They don't, they suck. Like fuck skate companies. They suck. Like we're going to do this. We hire a couple friends who hire another friend to run the business. And we just, you know, toss around ideas and stuff and then run out of money. <laughs> you know, it was like, <laughs> fuck, you gotta, you gotta sell a ton of shit to support this like system that we just set up. I mean, I just learned a lot. That's, that's, I mean, if there's any value in anything, it's just learning and yeah, just managing people is insane. It's so hard to, to expect everybody to want to make things work as hard as you do, but managing people is insane. When times get tough to let friends go is insane. I moved it into my garage and ran it by myself for like 18 months doing everything from Instagram, shipping and handling, customer service, ordering product, everything for like 18 months and kind of got out of the hole that we dug by creating this big system and spending all our money before we even had a product to sell. You know, it's like, there was like a lot of, I can't say that it's all us being stupid. There was like other issues too. But um, anyways, somehow, like I felt, I felt like it was coming into a really good stride and then coronavirus happened and I was feeling like well fuck that's whatever <laughs> like kind of <laughs> and then suddenly we're having like really good months and like business is like good I don't I don't know it's changed the way that it looks has changed a lot when we first started our friends that we hired kind of I mean I can't no, no blame but I, they feel that they used it as their art project more so than um, creating a brand and an identity around Craig, Austin, and I. And I feel like it's coming back and changing, being more personal to us and um, and people are, are responding. Yeah. Is it, that must be hard. Um, you know, there's always, there's that saying of don't ever mix friends and business. Oh, my God. That is, I... Even even if you need an electrician, don't even think of calling your friend. <laughs> <laughs> be, like... Oh my God. I, anytime I've hired friends for any, any little service, it's you're because you're the last priority. It's so much easier to brush you off. Someone that don't know. <laughs> totally. Yeah. But in the, in the defense of the people you work with, I've worked with you, Dane, and you have such a clear vision and you are this micromanager who knows exactly what you want. And I've said this to you. I can't think what I want though, but I cannot manage people. <laughs> I'm not like a leader in that way. And 
and we had we created this really weird bubble where it was like political where everybody was like tiptoeing around each other and then talking behind each other's backs <laughs> like it's just and like it just turned into this maelstrom of uh bad communication and and then like ultimately like bad vibes between friends like over t-shirt graphics <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Or the lettering. laughs> yeah it really truly did no so I guess taking it back to your garage, so you felt it was sort of withering on the vine and you had a lack of control. You brought it in. People would send an email and say, hey, I have my package in here. And you'd be writing back, oh, your package will be arriving then. And then you sign it, Dane, and the kid's like, oh, sorry for saying fuck you, former. <laughs> that was- I wouldn't sign my name. That seemed too, that seems too like. Did you do it a couple of times though? You wrote back, Dane. I did, and it felt really weird. So I just quit doing it. <laughs> right, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I knew that. I would have rang. Hey, uh, you've got any yeah, extra large. order something and just make it extra super difficult on me. You have it in pink. <laughs> yeah.